Hey friends, Craig here, and today I'm gonna to give you a tour of this bus. This is the Red Bus, my 1987 Volkswagen Vanagon Synchro Sunroof Westphalia. Now, none of that makes any sense because they didn't make that car. This is one of the rarest Vanagons ever produced. This is a Synchro, meaning four-wheel drive. This has a full-time all-wheel drive system with a walking rear differential but it has a sunroof. This was originally equipped as a passenger van, just a seven seater minivan, that has a four foot sunroof in the middle, manually cranked sunroof. It's a pretty wild feature and it wasn't very popular because you had to pay more for it than if you had air conditioning. And you couldn't get both because the air conditioning duct would have gone through the middle. So it was uncommon. I've seen 17 sunroof synchros sell in the 13 years I've been tracking it. Um, I bought this one after looking for a couple of years. I bought this one uh, 11 years ago, I've owned this. And this was kind of my dream bus. This is the one, this is the one I kept looking for. And I found a rust-free, clean example on the West Coast that had been parked for 13 years. So I bought it pretty much sight unseen, two bad cell phone pictures from a flip phone, and uh, shipped it across the country, and it was everything I dreamed of. Uh, over the course of the last 11 years, I've built it into the car that stands before you today. My dream car. And maybe it's your dream car too. I'm thinking of selling it. There she is at first glance. She is absolutely stunning in this light. She's been repainted in the original Titian Red Metallic. And uh, the gray stripe, which was originally just a sticker, that was painted a 2010 uh, Volkswagen color. I think it's called graphite and it's, it's pretty cool. So that's painted on. So it doesn't collect the wax the way the old ones do the stickers. The bottom is all bedlinered in, um, uh, Paul Raptor P professionally done. The body shop did all of this and I have all the pictures throughout the restoration. This, this thing is just immaculate. It's never had any rust. It's never seen salt. The reason I'm filming this today is because it's about to go into its winter storage where it hides for five months out of the year. This car has never seen salt and never will. Let's go for a tour. Around front, one of the most striking features, this bumper. This is the Bostig NFB-C. Stands for nice bumper. Um, the compact version. I think they only made about 10 of these. I've owned three of them, which is crazy, but this was a kit they were developing. They never went into production and it is unbelievable. This bumper mounts directly through the frame in a way more elaborate way than the stock bumper does. So this, these toe points are very real. You could pick this car up from those toe points. It also has a winch mount built into it. It is very elaborate the way it mounts. It's incredible. It's the perfect Vanagon bumper. It's a shame it never went into production. We've got the smoked side markers. We've got the blacked out uh, single round headlight grill, but with the big emblem, that's rare. These are H4 headlights because I restored this car in the era before uh, LEDs were really an option. And she's a little stanced, right? She's a little lifted. She's on the Steve Schwenk uh, synchro.org springs and it rides so comfortably. It's got these great BF Goodrich all-terrain TA tires. Uh, these are the 215 16s. These are on 16-inch Mefro steel wheels. These are a uh, custom European wheel that's extremely durable. And behind those front wheels, we've got some PowerFlex suspension bushings, uh, new wheel bearings, new front axles, fully rebuilt um, front diff with a uh, more aggressive VC, what's called a sport VC. That gives it more all-terrain performance. It kind of engages the all-wheel drive a little faster, which is kind of cool. Um, it's not a locking front diff. That can be added. But other things we've got going on up here, we've also got big brakes. These are Audi G60 front brakes. So they use uh, off-the-shelf parts, but they're basically a modern Audi A6 brake on this car. It, it really increases the braking performance substantially. And to that tune, the rear brakes have also all been rebuilt. All the lines have been done. All new master cylinders, all new slave cylinders, all that. And it has the BMW E30 brake booster, which is a bigger brake booster, and it increases the braking performance and really the, the braking feel. So enough about brakes. Let's talk more about this beautiful thing. Right, She's got all new seals throughout because we blew this body completely apart. All windows out, all trim off, really an elaborate paint job. 
We've got the truck mirrors. I love the truck mirrors. They give so much better visibility. Uh, brand new windshield. I believe a windshield is a maintenance item. You should be replacing your windshield every 10 years or so because it gets those little specks in it and then it makes it real glary at night. It makes it very difficult to drive. Oh, cooling system's all been gone through and is quite delightful. This is what we call the long side because when you're sanding it, this side sucks. So this is a straight as an arrow. Really quite proud of this. And we've got a couple of real cool features going on here. We have the black framed windows. One of these, this one, this side is a Westy window, a black framed Westy window from an 88 or later Vanagon. Um, the black frames are nice because especially when you combine it with the 5% limo tint, which we had to pull the whole window apart to do so that it doesn't peel. Oh, so good. It's such a good look. It's all blacked out, but the front windows aren't touched at all. So it's completely legal, at least in my state. And you've got great visibility. The back window is tinted, but at 20%. So you can still see when you're backing up at night and stuff. And we'll get into that in a second. But all the other side windows are blacked out, which is nice because especially as a tin top and not a Westie, I can stealth camp in like any parking lot. And it doesn't look like a camper van. It doesn't have the top popped. It doesn't give all the clear indications of a camper van. And if you went to look in here, you can't see through this window and you can't see that the curtain is drawn behind it. So you can't see through anything. It's pretty cool. Look at how unbelievably clean it is under here. I mean, that is all factory. This is the factory gold CAD plating on all of these parts. I mean, this is just absolutely remarkable. It's as dry as they get. There's not a speck of rust on this car. I love it especially up here. This is where you commonly see substantial rust. You'll see this all lifting up. And on this one, it's perfect. So look in this other wheel well, look at that. Look at how clean it is in there. That's all the factory undercoating. So good, so good. Such a good original vehicle. If we walk around to this side, you'll see, you know, a door and stuff. But a couple of relevant things. The door handles have been redone. The black trim here instead of the customary gray one. The windows are trimmed out in black instead of in the customary uh, chrome, you know. This window is not a Westy window. This is a f uh, regular GL window, so it opens further. You only really need one, so you can put the screen Let's in. Let's go inside. Okay, this is where it gets weird. This is a sunroof. Synchro Westphalia. If you're a solo camper like myself, this is perfect. You don't need the far more expensive uh, Westphalia version. You don't need the high profile of the roof and some of the additional things that come with it. There are disadvantages to the Westies. These passenger vans were designed to be a little more luxurious, a little quieter, and they're a little nicer. This interior is out of a 1985 and it is just pristine. It's a beautiful interior in great shape. I've added this nice netting on the front so you can put all of your garbage in there. That gets filled with garbage real fast. And then I don't have this really designed to run plugged in much. I don't do a lot of 110 stuff. So we've got a big battery bank and right here we've got two USB ports and one uh, cigarette lighter port. And there's more of those too, I'll get to that. Inside of these cabinets, we've got our battery bank. I took the water tank out. And so instead down here is 170 amp hour deep cycle um, AGM battery. These days it would make sense to put in a lithium one, but when this was last done, that was great. And that still works fantastic. I can go for about five days just on the solar, running the fridge and the furnace. I've also got in here a cell phone booster from SureCall. This runs off an antenna on the top and it increases your cell phone performance wherever it is you are. And we've got some charging device spots in here so you can charge all your batteries and things in there. I keep linens in here. We've got our uh, coat rack in there so you can hang up a suit and things. And over there you've got the controls for the furnace which is nice over there because you can control it from bed. So if you're a little hot or a little cold, you can just tweak it a little bit. And that gets us to the furnace. Right down here underneath the fridge is a Wabasto Airtop 2000 STC. And that is a gasoline powered furnace that actually runs on the gas from the gas tank. It's thermostatically controlled, cycles on and off as needed. And it does an amazing job of keeping this car warm when it's not warm out. There's a uh, uh, gas detector, CO2 and propane gas detector uh, in between there, which is nice. 
And this is underneath a truck fridge, a truck fridge TF65. So this is the bigger of the truck fridges. This is not the one that fits directly in there. To do this, you have to take this whole cabinet apart and move that wall over about a half an inch. It's a very involved process, but you get a fridge that's substantially bigger than stock and even really quite a bit more functional and bigger than the more common truck fridge TF49. Under here, you've got the, uh, the two burner stove, right? And you still have the sink. I just don't have it plumbed into anything. But the two burner stove runs off one pound gas cans that are in here. So, you know, you can still hook it up to some propane, do your propane things. And then I got all my electricals down here. They're just all apart right now. So I can pull the, uh, pull the, the fuses when it goes into storage. You'll see that there's a Victron Energy uh, battery management system right there. That gives me a monitor that I can real easily look at to tell what my battery state of charge is, but it also allows me to Bluetooth that to my phone so I can check real easily. The battery system in this bus is a little dated, but it would be effortless to update to lithium based. It, uh, all the, the charge controller, which is a, uh, uh, an MPPT Victron charge controller. So it gets a little more efficiency out of the solar panel. Um, that's rated for lithium and whatnot. You just have to switch out the battery, but there's no reason to. It'll run this fridge and another fridge. I sometimes put uh, ARB fridge in here. It'll run both of those for several days. You can certainly go to a music festival and not be worried about your power. There's a lot of power on this bus and that's pretty sweet. Let's look at some other things. Up here, we've got a couple of cool things going for us. We've got a new carpet kit from um, SoFine, and it's so nice. It is so fine. These seats are very rare originals with brown adjustable armrests. These adjustable armrest seats would have only come in late 87s, and these are rare. I've only seen three sets of these in my entire life, and I've purchased two of them. Uh, these are the, this is the nicest of the pair I've ever owned. So these are really, really nice. The parking brake works perfectly. I know that sounds weird, but some of these suck a lot. The shifter has been fully rebuilt and it shifts so crisp. The transmission and drivetrain are flawless on this. We've got a Midland MXT 500 GMRS radio, which is wired into the back with a funky little antenna. And we've got an ashtray elimination kit here with a pair of USB 3.0 ports for charging your devices and your your microphone for your sweet stereo system. And then you got a place that you put your cellular device here and you got your, your walkie talkie device for talking to your bros while you're driving, which is sweet. Then you got a more USB over here and you got a electricity outlet there. It's all pretty good. You got this nice brown carpeted cover that covers up all of the cracks in the dash because if you know brown Vanagon dashes, they're all ruined. They don't exist. You get yourself a cover. Okay, as we go from the uh, right to left and stuff, you do have both a diff lock and a decoupler. That decoupler allows you to put it into two-wheel drive mode when you're driving on the road, so you get a little less, uh, uh, maybe some more better MPGs and stuff, but not really. It honestly just saves wear and tear on the drivetrain. Up here, you got the fancy Go Westy cranks. These are real nice. And you got some Pioneer 5-inch speakers. That's good. It puts out a good bit of noise. These doors have been fully sound deadened. Uh, and then they've got the uh, vapor barrier replaced with uh, Cascade Audio VB2, which is just another great sound deadening product. So they're nice and quiet. This car is so quiet. Down here, you got a safe. This is pretty cool. This is a little safe made by Burley Motorsports and you can uh, open it up and in there is where your money or your or your weaponry goes whatever it is you need to put in there that's pretty slick let's go over there and look at some more things over here over we've there. got things right we've got uh, some amount of miles 125,000 the odometer and speedometer work great which is uncommon on a synchro uh, that's that's pretty rare that those work properly the tack works great and that's relevant because the engine in this revs all the way to low on the gas gauge you can go to about 8k on this pretty happily it has a check engine light replacing the oxygen sensor light it isn't on but if you do have a check engine need it'll tell you which is a nice feature because this is a way better we engine. should talk about this engine a little bit this has the Bostig conversion. It's running a 2001 Ford Focus ZTEC engine. The ZTEC engine was designed and built by Cosworth, which is a well reputed engine builder. It puts out about 130 horsepower. It really likes to rev. It's not as torquey. Well, it still has more torque than the stock engine, but man, it likes to rev. You can run this thing at 6,500 all day. She'll do 75 on the highway. This, this car is pretty fast if you want to drive it 
fast. I have had this engine for 10 years. It's been in two different buses. I moved it to this bus. In the previous bus, I went 113 miles per hour out at a specific flat piece of salt somewhere in the country. And, uh, and yeah, it goes, it's a goer. The other thing that's crazy is I've had this engine for like 60,000 miles between the two buses and I've driven it to almost every state. This engine has been everywhere and it has been so reliable. I am so confident that this bus will go anywhere that basically I haven't driven it this year. It only got a couple tanks of gas through it because there's nothing wrong with it. For me, I'm always about fixing these buses up and I've got a couple of projects and I'm trying to put local miles on them to, to work out all of the problems and things like that. And, uh, this one just sat in the garage because there's literally no reason to drive it. It doesn't need to be uh, tested in any capacity. If, if, and this has happened in the past where I've got a trip planned and I'm planning to take the, re the blue bus or whatever, which is sort of experimental at the time I'm talking about this. And at the last minute, I'm like, oh crap, I can't take that. That's not reliable. It's not going to make that trip. Day of, I can throw my stuff in red. I'll make it. It's never a concern. This, this has been my daily driver in the past. Now it just, it's just too good. So it just sits around. It's kind of a bummer. It's also pretty fun. Under the carpet is something pretty important too. All of the interior has been taken out, sprayed with a spray and sound deadener, and then sprayed with bed liner over that. So that really encapsulates it. So there's no mousiness. Not that there's ever been mice in this, but a lot of these vans do. And that's, that's a, a, a service we do to get the mousiness out but it also really encapsulates it forms a nice vapor barrier and really keeps condensation from from causing the the, the famous seam rusts that will make these seam, seams fail from the inside uh, the interior of the bus is also fully insulated with rock wool rock sole, uh, rock wool insulation so it gets really nice and warm in there in the cold months it's pretty nice one other thing I almost forgot to talk about, the stereo. It's just a regular Pioneer stereo with a Bluetooth headset and stuff. But under the front seat, under the driver's seat, there's a low profile subwoofer. And that's a pretty awesome feature because it doesn't really fill in the base a whole lot. Honestly, if you were sitting in the back, you'd still be disappointed in the stereo performance. But when you're the driver, it puts that motion straight into your body and you feel it. You really feel it. It really just, it fills it in. It's just a, it's about as good as a Vanagon sound system can get. The other thing that's under this seat, because there's no auxiliary battery under here, there's a 30 amp charger, an IOTA charger, which can run lithium or whatever. And what's nice about that is when I plug in the car, uh, and I'll show you the, the plug-in port in the back, when I plug in the car, it automatically runs the fridge and stuff off of the AC that we're plugged into while charging the battery. So I never really have to monitor it. If I just want to plug in, I plug in and it charges my batteries up. It's pretty sweet. Coming around back here, we've got the 100 watt Renogy solar panel uh, mounted on some Yakima bars and they work pretty good. I'm real happy with them. And then coming out here, you've got your, your solar wiring that runs to that and it Ys in so that you can add another panel if you're going to a music festival for a couple days and you wanna have a deployable panel that you stick right there, you can have your deployed panel and run 200 watts combined. You'll see this little guy here too. This is the low profile antenna for the cell phone booster. Real slick feature. And if you come around here, there's the low profile antenna for the GMRS radio. It's pretty cool. And you still have room on this side to put a large Yakima box on top. I have a toolie box, but you can put a yak, you can put any kind of roof box up there and carry all of your garbage with you on your adventure. From the back side here, oh, she's a beaut, isn't it? We've got the Rocky Mountain Westie Swing Away Tire Carrier. Puts that 16 inch oversized spare in the back and it's really convenient. It's, I, honestly, I don't get in the back very often, but when I do, it's real easy to swing that out of the way. Other features we've got are, uh, electricity hole here you plug in your your 110s and it charges things up we've got a backup light that's pretty slick when you put the car in reverse it fires up that backup light and you can see real clearly behind you and then we've got this hitch this hitch is a copy of one that's on the market i made it myself because i'm a professional fabricator and what i didn't like about their hitch setup is you lose your tow hooks so i went ahead and made this to accommodate some big old shackles here so that you can real easily, this is straight into the frame, you can real easily lift the car, or tow the car, or more importantly, more usually, I'm towing someone else that's stuck out of their stuck situation using this car. And it works awesome. 
This ladder rack setup is by Gary Lee in Canada. It's fantastic. It's it just um, it, there's no screws. You can take this right off. It doesn't modify or damage the vehicle at all. And I got the micro bus emblem from South Africa. We've got these quick fist clamp spots here for clamp lading on. I, uh, I usually keep a shovel back here and I have additional ones I, I put on sometimes when I'm going on a long trip and want to bring an ax or a chainsaw or whatever. And that's pretty cool. And then back here, we've got the Bostic engine. I, uh, I don't think I'm gonna give you the full tour of that on this video, but this is a 2010 kit. Uh, well, I think it's V2 G6. That'll mean something to someone, but the point is uh, this is a great engine, unbelievably reliable. It's got the full uh, 3 8 inch thick skid plate on it. I know it looks like it's hanging low, but I can tell you this. This has the most ground clearance of the four Vanigans in my driveway right now. And not only that, my lowest point, I have better departure angle than the other Vanigans. And my lowest point is a skid plate that I can lift the entire car from. So that's not the case on the others. This thing is beefy. It's impressive. And again, you get this not for the power, you get this for the reliability. It is a sub significant increase in power but you also simply can't blow it up. And if you do, they sell Ford Focus parts like everywhere, as opposed to Vanagon water boxer parts. It's pretty slick. Oh, what else am I missing? Let's see. Oh, back there's a bed. It's covered in garbage and stuff, which is why I'm not gonna dig it out too much. I got the third brake light and all those things going on. We've got the front table mount in case you wanna put a front table in, but honestly, I don't bring the tables with me anymore. Um, times are changing. Now you got all of the ample storage space under the back seat. The front seats do not swivel around because it's not a factory Westy, but you could do that. I just chose not to. It adds, you, you lose an inch of height, and as a tall person, it's, it's kind of inconvenient. And then we get to the sunroof. Let's talk about that sunroof. That's the coolest feature Look of this whole thing. Look at that massive sunroof. Please disregard the fact that I personally put this uh, um, headliner in, and I did a bad job. I'm willing to admit that the one thing that would make this car win more shows, and I say more shows because it wins a lot of shows already, would be a new headliner. You should have a professional shop put in a new headliner. They're available through So Fine. They made this one. The headliner's phenomenal. The installer was an idiot who didn't know what they were doing, and that was me. Anyway, this is a three to four foot sunroof. I don't remember, I haven't measured it in a while, but it's very big, and it cranks back using this hand crank right there. And then you got this big hole in the middle and it's so cool. Let's go up top and take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. Big hole in the middle. It's super cool. I love this thing. And then you can put your, put your roof basket back there. You can put a basket or a box and then still open the sunroof and on a nice day. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's just so panoramic. It's like a modern Tesla. It's pretty cool. If you don't know about what a Vanagon Synchro is, it's an all wheel drive system developed to, uh, to make a way, way more capable, basically the most refined version of this vehicle out there. They had to do some real weird stuff to pull that off. They had to move the gas tank from the front to the back. They had to lower the drivetrain down an inch and move it a half inch to the left, all that stuff. There's a very proprietary transmission on here that costs an enormous amount of money. This one has been meticulously maintained with Swepco 201 gear oil, and it shifts into all of the gears effortlessly. We, uh... I've had it apart, I've had a professional look at it, but we didn't really do a full rebuild at the time. There was no need to, so um, it's good. It's good, it just has no issues. I've got tons of ground clearance under this thing. We'll take a look underneath and how clean it is. And uh, yeah, we got the locking rear diff that works great. We've got the front uh, decoupler and you could add a front diff if you wanted all three knobs to work. That's the American dream right there. But uh, boy, she's just... She's a good boss. This thing, I love this car. I have been on so many wild adventures in this. I've lived in this. This has allowed me to take the crazy trips that I have and to grow my business and to grow as a person. I mean, this is the bus that allowed me to get jobs, remote jobs that I really wasn't that qualified for and to take those risks and to go places that I wouldn't have gone. And that's how I ended up becoming a yacht captain and a professional sailboat racer for a while and uh you know just touring the country and doing really some crazy things there's i've got a, a pretty cool life story and honestly so much of it comes down to the adventures that have been had in this bus hopefully there's some adventures left and i don't know i mean i just have too many buses and this one's perfect 
there's no logical reason for me to drive it because I need to test all the other ones. This one is just flawless. It's so good. I just can't get over it. Oh, let's look Check underneath. that out. It's so, so clean. All of that clearance. I mean, we're, we're sitting on six inch tall grass here, but all that original undercoat, everything is so nice and tucked up in there. Oh, she's so good. Look at that. Hard to believe. Let's look at a few of my favorite spots that just show how clean and original this car is. If you know Vanagon Synchros, you know that things like the fuel tank straps back here are usually rusted away to the point where they've fully dissolved. The gas tank is sitting on top of the transmission and things like the fuel sending unit actually have rust holes in them, which is insane. Wait till you see this That one. is the factory CAD plating on that mount right there. And uh, let's see, how do we get to the gas tank the sending unit? It doesn't really want to focus, but it is just perfect back there. This is all original, never been apart. Honestly, pretty, pretty awesome. Look at that sweet engine all tucked up in there. Real easy to change the oil and service things. Tons of access, unbelievable access, plenty of power. She's a goer. She goes. Every axle's been rebuilt. Every braking component's been rebuilt. The clutch has new masters and slaves. It's got a new clutch. I mean, basically everything on this car is done. There's just nothing left to do. I've got a lot, you know, there's always a running list of like, oh, make sure you replace that screw and stuff. And I'm perfectly willing to admit things like the headliner is not flawless, but man, this car is reliable. And I think there's so many Vanagons for sale that the people can say that all day long, but they're not. I wanted to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not driving this car because of how reliable it is. Again, I have a stack of other Vanagon projects. This is my hobby. I've done this for a long time and this has always been my dream bus that has always come first. And as a result, there's nothing wrong with it. I love this thing. Man, just listen to that thunk. When you do proper sound deadening in these doors, as opposed to they can be super rattly. This is just, Nice. Well, there's the engine. She's a, a little bit of an earlier style. You know, you got the that over there and the that over there instead of some of the things being in the opposite spots. But the point is, it's great. This little guy fits under the deck with no raised anything, and it just spins. You push the fast pedal and it goes faster. It's really quite delightful. And you turn the key and it makes the cranking sounds followed by an enormous amount of noise. And then you drive it as loudly and as quickly as you wish to. And by loudly, I'm just saying that because you can make it go like, you know, she's a goer. It's not loud unless you really mash on it. But that's a good time.